Hi there, welcome to the Electronics Lab. In this video, I would like to explain what stability is and how negative feedback can lead to instability in negative feedback amplifiers. If you've seen my previous video about negative feedback for op amps, you'll know that negative feedback brings all sorts of advantages. It can bring controlled gain. It can improve the bandwidth. It can give you control over the input impedance and control over the output impedance. And that kind of control depends on the type of negative feedback that you have, trans voltage, trans current, etc. And it can give you noise attenuation. For example, the distortion. So it seems like there is nothing better than negative feedback. Well, almost nothing. There are actually some downsides to negative feedback, or at least some things to watch out for. And the biggest one is that your seemingly perfectly designed amplifier can suddenly explode into unexpected behavior if it's not designed to be sufficiently stable. So stability is one of the most important but non-obvious factors to consider when designing an op amp. But before getting into what you need to do to ensure stability, let's try to get a better sense of what stability is. So in this negative feedback loop for this amplifier configuration, what we'll have is a input signal here. Let's just draw it as a sinusoidal wave. That's applied at the non-inverting input. And then this will go through the open loop gain part of the amplifier and then be fed back through the beta feedback block to the inverting input of the amplifier. And when this signal is in phase and the two signals are subtracted from each other, so this signal is subtracted from this signal, you have negative feedback. However, if you have that same input signal here and the feedback is phase shifted by 180 degrees, so it's completely out of phase, you get this signal minus this signal, which is just the opposite of the, of the first signal, and so you end up with a larger signal at the output, and this is positive feedback. So basically, you get an input signal, you amplify it through the open loop part of the gain, feed it back through the network here, back to the input, add it to the original input, and the signal gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it reaches some limit of the system. So basically, your system explodes, metaphorically speaking. And this explosion is instability. So you'll either reach some limit of the system or you'll go into some, some kind of oscillation in the system. That is an effect that you just don't want. So you may well be thinking, if I'm not purposely phase shifting the feedback signal, I will always be feeding back an in-phase voltage or current. Therefore, I will always have negative feedback. Unfortunately, even if you don't purposely phase shift the signal, your system will do it for you. Remember that op amps generally have a single dominant pole? Well, that pole is going to cause the phase shift for you. In my previous video on open versus closed loop gain, we looked at how gain is affected by that dominant pole of the op amp. Well, phase shift between input and output will also be affected by that pole. And that phase shift changes like this. As frequency increases, the phase shift changes. In this Bode plot, you can see that we start here at 180 degrees when the frequency is close to DC and then decreases as the frequency increases. And then after 180 degrees of phase shift, we're at zero degrees. And it's at that point that you have 180 degrees of phase shift from the initial DC phase. And it's at this point, if the feedback signal is large enough, you will get instability. Okay, that's a lot of concepts put into one statement. So let's dive into it to bring out some more details and specifics. And let's start by looking at the feedback amplifier and specifically at the summing junction right here. It's where the control signal, I'm going to designate it as a voltage, but it could just as well be current, or we could even call it the input voltage, and the feedback signal are combined. Over here is where we have the output, and then beta is the multiplier for the feedback network. So what happens is you have the difference between the input and the feedback being multiplied by AOL, feeding back through the beta network to give you the feedback voltage. So that feedback voltage is equal to the difference between the input and the feedback, times the open loop gain times beta. And this portion of the equation, this open loop gain times beta, is called the loop gain. Because it is the gain applied to the input when it is looped back into the feedback block. And again, from the block, it looks like the feedback will always be negative feedback because we're subtracting the feedback from the control signal. But remember, this AOL, this AOL block that we see in the loop gain equation is frequency dependent. And sometimes the beta is frequency dependent as well. So both of those 
and at the very least the open loop gain is going to cause phase shift of the feedback signal as the frequency changes. And when that phase shift gets up to 180 degrees, we have the potential for instability. And I say potential because if the magnitude of the signal is small enough when the phase shift is at 180 degrees, then the signals will gradually attenuate and won't lead to instability. So to be more precise with our statement, if the magnitude of the loop gain, which is the open loop gain times beta, is greater than or equal to one when the phase shift is 180 degrees, then the system is unstable because any signals that are at that frequency will exhibit positive feedback. However, if the magnitude of the loop gain is less than one when the phase shift of the loop gain is 180 degrees, then the system is theoretically stable. This means that in a theoretically perfect system, you would have stability. But in the real world, the system may or may not be stable. And this is for several reasons. One is that the pole may not be at the exact frequency predicted. The pole frequency can shift due to environmental conditions or time. And there's often other stray capacitances that are going to add additional poles to the system, which can cause the phase shift to reach 180 degrees quicker, which means that your open loop gain will actually be greater than one when the phase shift is in practice actually at 180 degrees. So normally checking for theoretical stability is not a good practice since the system may not be stable in actuality. And you usually will want to have some margin of stability, but we'll come back to that in a minute. As an exercise, it is useful to understand how to check for theoretical stability. That way you can get a better sense of how to add appropriate stability margins. So what I'm going to do is use LT Spice to check the loop gain for theoretical stability on this transvoltage inverting amplifier circuit here, specifically using an LT6016 op amp. Okay, we're looking at the Bode plot for this particular inverting amplifier circuit that I just showed you. I'll show you how to build the circuit so that you can simulate the loop gain in a future video. But for now, let's just look at the Bode plot of the loop gain. And what we're looking for is the point where the phase shift has reached 180 degrees. So for this particular circuit, it starts, the phase shift starts at 180 degrees. And so we're looking for the point where the phase has reached zero, which is right there. And then look at the corresponding gain. And if that gain is less than one, or in this case, less than zero dB, then our circuit is theoretically stable. And the easiest way to see that intersection instead of eyeballing it is to click on the signal name, which will bring up the cursor and this display, and then drag the cursor over to the point where the phase is at zero degrees, which is, it's hard to get it down precisely. Oh, that's pretty good, 82.4 milliDegrees. And at that point, the gain is minus 15.8 dBs, which is less than zero dBs. And that means that our circuit is theoretically stable. And, and that circuit that we just looked at actually has no load on it. And when you add a load, the frequency response of your circuit is going to change, especially if you add a capacitive load, because then you're adding another pole to the circuit, and that's definitely going to affect the Bode plot. So let's see what happens if I add a 10 nanofarad capacitor to the circuit. Is it still theoretically stable? So here's the new loop gain plot for that same circuit, but with that 10 nanofarad capacitor connected at the output. And I can click on it to get my cursors to come up again, drag this over to the point where the phase drops to zero. All right, let's go with that and look at the magnitude of the gain, 18.35 something something decibels, far more than zero dBs. We know for sure this circuit is not stable. And if I run the circuit, if I apply a step function to this circuit, this is the response I get. Definitely not a step output. The circuit's unstable and going into oscillations. So as I've said before, theoretically stable is not necessarily stable. Shifts in poles or poles that you didn't account for can change the stability. So to ensure stability, we need to add in sufficient margin between the point where the gain is one or zero dB and the point where the phase shift is 180 degrees. And there are two ways to specify or measure this. The first is called the phase margin, and it's the phase difference between the phase where the loop gain is one or zero dB and minus 180 degrees. In other words, when the gain is one, how many more degrees of phase shift will you need until the phase is shifted 180 degrees? And the generally accepted value for a sufficiently stable system is when you have a phase margin that is greater than or equal to 45 degrees. Now let's go back to this circuit here and look what its phase margin is. So since we're starting at 180 degrees and going down when we look at the phase on this Bode plot, what we can do is find the point where the gain is zero dB 
and then look at what the phase is at that point. And that value will be our phase margin. So again, let's bring up the cursors, drag the cursor over until we see the magnitude at zero, zero dB, which is right around there. And we can see that the phase angle is 54.5 degrees there, which means we have 54.5 more degrees until we get down to a full phase shift of 180 degrees when compared to DC. So the phase margin for our circuit is 54.5 degrees. The second measure for looking at a sufficiently stable system is called the gain margin. And the gain margin is the difference between the gain when the phase is at 180 degrees and zero dB. Let's go back to the Bode plot of our circuit and figure out what the gain margin would be. Well, we already have our cursors up. So what we can do is take our cursor down to where the phase is zero degrees. So this will be a full 180 degree shift from DC. And then we can look at the magnitude and the magnitude is negative 15.69 decibels. So this means we're 15.69 decibels below zero dBs. And that is our gain margin. Our gain margin is 15.69 dB. So this has just been a brief introduction to the idea of stability and negative feedback amplifiers. We looked at what stability is. We looked at how to determine if an amplifier is theoretically stable. And we looked at how to use the phase and gain margins to determine if the amplifier is sufficiently stable. Now there's a lot more to learn about stability, but hopefully this gives you a good start. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.